Hello everybody and welcome to the G Kaiser Age. This is Lucia G Kaiser and today we're going to be taking a look at Square Enix's first line of Wander Arts figures from Front Mission, the Zenith with the Arid Camo variant. So let's go ahead and get started and launch this mission into the world of Front Mission. G Kaiser Age, Lucian G Kaiser, launching! Alright, so here we have the Front Mission Wander Arts Zenith from Square Enix's Wander Arts line. And I absolutely love the look of this figure. When I first saw the promo images and everything of it, I was so excited. The last time I actually had a Wanzer figure from Front Mission was back when they released the original ones from Art FX. And that was several, several years ago. I do believe about a decade ago even. And those figures, they were okay, but they had a lot of very loose joints on them that did not work to their advantage. But this figure that we'll be reviewing today is absolutely fantastic. Now it does have some minor things that I have to go over that kind of take away from how awesome a figure it is, but those really are small minor nitpicks in the end. So let's go ahead and take a look at the box first. And as you can see, it's got this very nice artwork of the figure itself there. And all the information about it is also listed on the side here. And I really love the look of this box art. And then on the back, you have an open panel where you would normally see the figure. And then, of course, information about the weapons and everything that it comes with. And now that we got that out of the way, let us go ahead and take a look at the figure itself. So, as you can see, very well designed. There's a lot of really great detail everywhere with some nice shading and a little bit of panel lining. A lot of nice mechanical detail on it as well. Get that to zoom in. Yep, a lot of great mechanical detailing just everywhere on the figure. And of course, posability. We'll take a look at that real quick. So, with the head, you don't get a 360 rotation, but you do get a little up and down. A little side to side there, so you get a nice little head bend, a little bit of upward bend, side, and then to the other side there. Got some nice eye coloring in there, and on the front sensor. All right, the next part of the posability, which is very cool. They have on a ball joint, the shoulders here. And the ball joint can actually elevate or lower. So you can lower the shoulder, you can raise the shoulder. And of course you got front and back. As you can see here, you can push it back. You can push it forward which I really appreciate. They did not have this on the older figures. And then of course, a ball joint at the shoulder. Allows for a nice 360. And then move the arm armor out of the way. And then you've got double bend elbow. And 
As you can see there, a lot of nice mechanical detail again. The hand is on a ball jointed at the actual back of the hand right here. So instead of it being ball jointed at the wrist, it's actually ball jointed at the back of the hand. So it gives the hand a little bit more free range motion. So that's really great. The chest does have a back pivot and a forward crunch just a little bit, but not a lot. You've got rotation, of course, at the waist, complete 360 available. And then, of course, with the legs, now the legs have some very special features to them. So, as you can see, there's a joint right there. You can actually elevate the leg upwards or downwards. And then, of course, rotation back and front. Nice clearance on that. So you get a lot of movement there on both sides. Independent. So you can get some really nice poses with this figure. And then you have the double bend at the knee. So you get a nice knee bend. There's no upper thigh rotation except for right here with this block. So the only thing you can do is rotate it about that far at an angle, but that's still really, really good. And you can rotate it inwards. Not sure why you would need to, but it's got that option. And then the feet, unfortunately no bendable toes or anything like that. And the foot is on a ball joint. So you can 360 rotate that. You've got a nice bend. So you can get some really dynamic poses with this figure. All right. But yes, with all this posability and everything is nice and firm, there's no like loose joints or anything like that. So you can easily move stuff, but it stays nice and firm into position. And I, pre <clears throat> I very much appreciate that. All right. And now let's go ahead and take a look at the accessories. So of course, it comes with a backpack. And that just installs on the back of the figure in the little back area here you just push it in it locks into place it's a little stiff to get out but once you do it once or twice it becomes easier to pull it out without it being loose which is another plus all right and then for the next weapons here you got of course nice submachine gun now this is one of the downsides of this figure. I'm not sure if this was a quality control issue, but there's no highlighting, panel lining, or anything like that on this submachine gun or the other weapons for the most part. And that's a little disappointing because now I'm gonna have to uh, pull out my own panel lining and everything. Like even in the barrel, there's no like black filler in the barrel. So I have to get a you know a little bit of painting in there. And then, of course, you got the bazooka. Once again, it looks very nice. It's got a lot of nice detail, but no highlights. And that's just, you know, a real disappointment there. And once again, the barrel is just molded color. So that's going to need a little paint as well. And then the final part is the assault rifle. Once again, same as the other weapons. Gonna definitely need a little work on that. I'll probably post some pictures on my imager after I uh, put some highlights and everything on this and do a little panel lining on it to make it look more worn and match with the actual Wanzer itself. But otherwise, the other thing that you get, of course, are pairs of hands. So, of course, you've got 
the fists, so a closed fist. You have open hands for holding the different variety of weapons. Like that. And then the main weapon hands I already have on here. So let's go ahead and put some weapons on him. Let's go ahead and give him the assault rifle. And the weapon that's always contentious with most figures, the bazooka. Now, the one thing I love about the bazooka is this handle. It's a nice, flexible handle. So it helps with posability. I think a lot more bazookas could use this on figures because they are notoriously hard to pose on figures. So I'm glad that they included this. Yeah, let's go ahead and just slap that in his other hand. And just so you know, yeah, these hands are a very tight fit. So you have to kind of be gentle and work it slowly into the hand to make it go in. And of course, because it's on the ball joint connected at the back of the hand, that ball joint comes, sometimes likes to pop off while you're putting the weapons on. But once you get the weapons on, it is fantastic looking. Now these shields that are on the arms, these shields are removable. They are not permanent, so you can take them off and you can swap them out for other shields from other figures. Which, by the way, there are two other figures in this series coming out. An uh, urban color version of the Zenith here. And then another wands or a whole new model that'll come with its own set of weapons. But as you can see, the figure looks fantastic. And with his posability, you can pretty much make it pose any way that you might like. Easily can take a kneeling pose without any issue and still being nicely balanced. I love it. It's a great figure. If you guys have ever been a fan of Front Mission and you've always wanted a Wanzer figure, this is definitely worth picking up. You can get it from Hobby Link Japan. There are pre-orders available for it right now on the Big Bad Toy Store, at least as of the posting of this video, but I would recommend getting those pre-orders in quick because I'm pretty sure once it comes in stock, people are gonna buy this out. I'm on Big Bad Toy Store, it was $89.99 on Hobby Link Japan. I do believe it was like $79.99, but you have to add in the higher amount of shipping for it. I got mine from Hobby Link Japan because I wanted to get it a little sooner, so I paid a good bit extra for you know FedEx shipping to get it here quickly, but it was definitely well worth it. This is a great figure to have. If you absolutely are a fan of Front Mission or even Mecha figures, this is a great series to start collecting. And like I said, the other one that comes out will have a different set of weapons, backpack and everything. It'll come in this color and then it'll also come in a camo color for uh, urban camo. So if you wanna mix and match different camo patterns or you wanna stick with the same camo pattern, you can pick it up with the same camo pattern as this one to be able to swap out parts. And because everything is on ball joints, you can literally swap out, you know, the actual arms, the legs, and everything, just like in the actual game itself. So, again, I want to thank you all for joining me here in the G Kaiser Age. Like I said, check out Hobby Link Japan or Big Bad Toy Store if you want to get a, a copy of this figure yourself to have it on your shelf. As always, please like, favorite, leave a comment. What were your best and favorite Front Mission games? What was your favorite Wanzer from the Front Mission series? And definitely check out my Facebook page and Twitter for updates on my next set of videos. And as always, keep an eye out on my Twitch. I may be streaming on there now that I got my PC up and running for that. So definitely keep an eye out for that as well. But again, I want to thank you for joining me here in the G Kaiser Age. This is Lucian G Kaiser signing out until the next Front Mission Battle.